and Bane says, oh, I'm trying to do the voice. You, you always have to cover your mouth when you do a Bane, just like Bane 101. Okay, here we With go. With both hands. Why have you come back? To lose again? I don't remember the dialogue. Please say something <laughs> okay. like that. Okay. okay. And then Batman goes, no, to defeat you. Okay. That's a dialogue in this movie. Yeah. That's a dialogue What's in problem this movie. With it? I do not understand. Mancha. In a world filled with war, hate, suffering, and Justin Bieber, two guys fix it all with a battle about a movie. One film. Two opinions, one coin, two sides, they feud, you decide, it's time for Film Feud. Hello and welcome to another episode of Film Feud, the podcast where we debate whether top rated movies should be top rated. I'm Vidur. And I'm Vikram. What's up Vikram? Not much man, what's up with you? Nothing, man. I'm pumped to feud, as always, but extra pumped today. Why so? Because, uh, you know, um, um, um... That's a good answer. Thanks. Red Bull I had two days ago. Okay. Okay, that works, I guess. I'm still pumping from it, you know? Okay, I'm just waiting for that crash, because that's going to be mighty interesting. Hopefully it doesn't happen in the middle of the feud, because, you know, I'm, I've been pumped for two days. It's, <laughs> it's overdue. I've had wings for two days. Free shout out to Red Bull. Free yeah. sponsor today. Free uncalled for shout out to Red Bull. Before the Red Bull makes me ramble more, why don't you tell the good folk what we're doing here? With player. So we take a movie from the IMDb Top 250, we toss a coin, heads argues for, and tails argues against. What the hell is player? Player. Like, Maya? No? You haven't heard that? No. So uh, it's like, it's an Indian thing. Like, a lot of people just silent the S's conveniently. So, so, so you meant pleasure. Yes. Which I got from context, but it still confused me. Okay. And what is Meyer? Measure. People say Meyer. My chemistry teacher, like, sixth grade, did that. And I lashed onto it with dear life. <laughs> oh, my Lord. <laughs> All right, good to know. It's like, you're like an onion. Something new unwraps about you every episode. How exciting. I will take that as a compliment. No, it's not. Anyway, the movie we're viewing this week is quite a classic. But does it deserve to be a classic? Oops, that's the whole point of the feud. The Dark Knight Rises. Alfred. Alfred. I think this Batman begins. Alfred. That's that's my best Batman impression. But it's important to point out, by the way, that this is a very special episode of Film Feud. We're doing something experimental, aren't we, Vikram? Yeah, so we're Nolan super fans. Am I right for the hit? Nolan, 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 <laughs> Nolan, Nolan, Nolan. Nolan. <laughs> That just came out. Oh, God, dude. I forgot about that song and that band. Undertaker entrance, man. Oh, yeah. It's Limp Bizkit for me. Because it's music. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. That's how much I love the man. By the way, I was in Bombay. I was like three feet from him. It's so exciting. One yeah. moment. Did you breathe his carbon dioxide? I did. There are some Nolan nodules in me now. Yeah. In my lungs. And That's so lucky, man. They make me a much better filmmaker. Okay, I believe you. Did I'm not a filmmaker. But if you I make was, a film, yeah. Exactly. I believe you till you make a film. Uh, so coming back to the point, we're Nolan super fans. We've seen all his movies like at least three times over. So what we're going to do this week is just feud off memory. Or you could say wing it. Hashtag Red Bull. Hashtag callback. Hashtag I didn't even plan for that. Look at that. We be winging it, Vikram. Yeah, this Red Bull is having some weird effects, man. So for the first time ever, we're going to feud without watching the movie right before we feud. We've basically seen it so many times that... Speak for yourself, firstly. When was the last time you watched this movie? 2018. Why? <laughs> I love Nolan. Didn't you just like... Well, I haven't seen this movie for a long time, but I obviously have seen it enough times. And I'm quite curious to see during the feud what I remember, what sticks around anyway. I'm also quite curious about this coin toss so yeah. I can uh, <laughs> proceed uh, yeah. a little more freely. Yeah. So why don't we get to it? You want to toss a coin? Yeah, for sure. Again, I'm tossing the coin. Heads argues for and tails argues against. Here we go. And I got heads for a Nolan movie. <laughs> I am the League of Shadows. I love this movie, dude. I hate this movie. Shut up, dude. Wait, 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 wait. You think I'm kidding? I know you're kidding. I'm not kidding. 
यू हेट दिस मूवी आई अबोर अबोर आई लोध लोध द डार्क नाइट राइजर्स This is my least, least. I don't even want to say favorite Nolan movie. You were about to, and that's what you exactly meant. It might be your least favorite Nolan movie, but it's still like better than any movie anyone else has ever made. No, it is not. My least favorite Nolan movie is Following. I haven't seen the Following actually. It's Following, not the Following. Oh. And you just outed yourself as not a true Nolan. I haven't fan. seen a student film. Shoot me! Oh, you're just a mainstream Nolan. You're a pleb. You're a Nolan pleb. They're like what? Seven movies? Eight movies? <coughs> Let's focus. Okay, I sorry. Hate the Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? We'll get to it. But before we do, a quick shout out to our sponsor. This episode of Film Feud is sponsored by Flow Mattress. What is Flow Mattress? It's the promise of the deepest sleep of your life. They have a unique hundred night trial policy. So you can actually sleep on the mattress for a hundred nights, and if you're not sleeping substantially better, then you can send it back for a full refund, no questions asked. And because the mattresses are shipped directly from the factory to you without any middlemen, they are fifty percent cheaper compared to traditional brands and start from only nine thousand nine hundred eighty-nine. Log on to flowmattress.com to find out more about this offering. That's f l o mattress dot com. Film Feud listeners get an exclusive ten percent discount when they use the code Film Feud on their purchase. And with that, let's get right into it. Let's not go watch the movie. Let's just get into it. How exciting! <laughs> let's do it, man. This is so weird. I I don't even know how to coalesce my thoughts. All Best ending to a trilogy ever. Don't don't. Firstly, don't say it as though you just watched the movie. Best ending to a trilogy ever. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Peter Jackson and um. Um, uh-huh, uh-huh. um. I well, you, I know you want to say Godfather, but you can't because it's not. So I'm just waiting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, Peter Jackson. I said Peter Jackson. No, man. This one's so much better. No, firstly, I know you're a Lord of the Rings super fan of the books. Yes, of the books. Yeah. Return of the King wasn't the best ending to a trilogy for you. In the books, yeah. The movie Return of the King sucked. Return of the King sucked. Yeah. The only good thing about the Lord of the Rings movies were the unedited versions, the three and a half, four hour movie versions. But the I call bullshit, Vikram. That's not a good band, dude. You should. I you don't should, have a good band. You should not do that. Okay. How about I do? Also, you just said, "I call bullshit, Vikram." <laughs> What was that? I I said I call bullshit. Oh, <laughs> you know, fun story about that band impression. I got super hammered on one of my birthdays, and I'm a jart. So instead of League of Shadows, it became Jart of Shadows. So the entire night, I was just saying, "I am the Jart of Shadows." Let's just start there. The band voice tone. By the way, you couldn't understand half the things he said in the movie. Really, I thought it was done really well. No, I remember watching the movie in theaters, and I could not understand anything he was saying. Oh my god, this movie—it was such a disappointing theatrical experience. Really, dude, the hype. I was I was giddy with excitement while I was watching it. Free? No, I was while giddy. watching Free. it. Let's just take a step back. The Dark Knight is amazing. One of the greatest. If not the greatest superhero movie of all time, not just superhero movie, a movie. I think I think it's a near perfect movie. Okay, and the Dark Knight Rises is so disappointing. In fact, the Dark Knight Rises, you know what? It's the Godfather three of the trilogy. Oh Jesus Christ, dude! Batman Begins has to be the weakest movie in this trilogy. Um, no, Batman Begins is fairly good compared to this piece of trash. This movie is. I don't want to say Matrix Revolutions. I don't want to say Godfather either because uh, you know Godfather one and two were so comparable. Ah, I've got it. It's the T three. The T three, the Terminator three. I don't even remember Terminator three. Exactly. No. Exactly. That's not. It's, you can't just take a bad ending of a trilogy. Firstly, Terminator is it a trilogy? What is it counted? I don't even know anymore. Like what that universe is like. It's a trilogy that didn't remain a trilogy. It's like Star Wars. Okay, so fair enough. And I, I feel like you... Star Wars, great ending to a trilogy. God damn it! <laughs> I don't I don't remember that. <laughs> You can't just you can't just think of trilogies, pick the worst one, and just like force it here. It makes no sense. This movie stitches together and ends the trilogy perfectly. Like there's there are very few movies that are able to do that. Lord of the Rings obviously does that because it has great source material. This movie is amazing because Nolan manages to take what Batman Begins started and Dark Knight took forward and end it in a very convincing manner. It didn't have the trilogy aspect where the story is flowing from one movie to the other. Yes, incidents are flowing. Well, I mean, they changed Rachel too in the first and second movie, so that actually always had me a little jarred. But there's no theme that's encompassing all three movies, right? I'll take back Terminator Two because it's kind of the same concept. Although with Terminator Two, there's always that looming thing of uh, uh, Judgment Day, right, which they keep playing around with. In Star Wars, it's one long story. In The Godfather, 
they actually play on the themes, right? In the first movie, Michael has to reluctantly take over. In the second movie, he has to drastically do worse and worse things. He has to kill his brother. And then in the third movie, the third movie ends with him just being sad about everyone he's lost. This third movie doesn't play back on the second, right? It doesn't play on like Harvey Dent. It doesn't play on like him losing Rachel. He just finds Catwoman, new squeeze. Oh, wait, wait. He, let me, let me, let me hold you. Let me, hold up, hold up. Of course he plays on Harvey Dent. That's how the bloody movie starts. The entire, the entire beginning and the tone set of the movie is based on Harvey Dent's supposed heroic death. No, that's and just a transition to the third movie because if that still mattered, that would matter at the end. That only matters just to set the stage and talk about how he's gone into retirement. No, he Bane uses that to to just take Gotham and guide it towards anarchy. Like that plays out till literally like the first three fourths of the movie. So it has an impact. And secondly, like Christian Bale's character evolution throughout this movie is very akin to what you mentioned about Michael Corleone, right? It's it's him losing what he thinks uh, what he takes for granted and then just becoming a uh, coming on his own taking it forward into the second movie he's already done he's already done when the movie starts he's already retired right and then he comes back and saves gotham one last time come why? on man why? come on man why? why what do you mean why, he why does he come back because it's his city he feels for it so he wants to he save it seven years he was reeling from the loss of the love of his life was he though yes he was it's pretty evident that's why he's holed in this is what happens when you don't watch the movie before the feud, by the way. Okay, I'll, but it just goes to show. I'll, I'll refresh your memory uh, and also give you a concession from my end. Okay. Ah, so all of the all of the concession begins. The first of a great trilogy of concession. A concession rises. Yeah, no, not working. All of uh, the scenes involving Alfred and Batman are mostly talking about why Batman's become a recluse and why he's ignoring his duties as Batman. And they talk about the loss of Rachel a lot. And that's why Bruce Wayne is in the state of mind that he is. My concession is all of the scenes that Batman and Alfred have. Because Alfred doesn't really... Agree. He's just crying, man. He's whining and crying in the entire movie. You me? mean Bruce Wayne and Alfred have? No. Yeah, Bruce Wayne and Alfred. Sorry, yes. I Alfred's just whining, man. He's just crying and then he eventually leaves and then... Just do a quick impression of Alfred whining. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Caine? No, dude, I can't. No, you have to. I can't do it. I can't. I can't do it. I, he's too good. Uh, it, it's Someday, Master Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> you realize that you're the one who needs saving. <laughs> <laughs> I did my best. <laughs> you know what the super cool part is uh, when uh, when Bane surfaces and then Bruce Wayne and Alfred are going over Bane footage and then they're going back and forth in terms of how do you defeat a terror like Bane. So Alfred goes back to his days of when he was in, I don't know, the military or whatever, where they're uh, probably in the First World War. <laughs> And then they're going through, they're, they're in Africa or something, and they're going through this jungle hunting for this one person. And then they just can't find it. So Bruce is like, what was the solution? He's like, we burned down the jungle. And then they literally like, that That was the solution to Bane. Like, I, that was the only cool exchange. After that, it just got whiny and... Why does he leave? leave? Alfred leaves, right? That's so lame. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty lame. He leaves because, um, because Bruce Wayne just refuses to... Um, uh, stop being Batman. Stop being Batman. Just putting himself through this, and I've then I blocked so many parts about this movie, and I see why. I'm, I, I, I'm telling you, you blocked out the Batman and Alfred sort of. So the bad part, your concession. All right. Yeah. Concession two. The dialogues in this movie. You can't give me a concession. No, I insist. Oh, on your I concession. use the concession for four. No, I insist on your concession. The dialogues in this movie that has a to be. Storms concession. coming, Master Wayne. You know. You know what? Tell me if you remember this dialogue. And even if you do, and if you don't, both's a point for me. I probably do, because I'm a Nolan fangirl, but yeah. Okay, Batman comes back from the Rajasthani prison. Uh -huh. And I say Rajasthani. Shout out. It was shot in Rajasthan. Yeah. And uh, I'll tell you a story about it. Actually, you know what? Let me clear, clear up there. So that scene where they show Batman coming out. So when they just show that, the well. Yeah. Only that part's Rajasthan, the actual prison's not. Oh, really? Yeah. So they didn't even show that in Rajasthan? I mean, I don't know where you have a place like that. So. They just found a hole <laughs> and they shot there. Okay, he comes back to Gotham and Bane says, Oh, I'm trying to do the voice. You, you, you always have to cover your mouth when you do a Bane. Just like Bane 101. Okay, here we With go. With both hands. Why have you come back? To lose again? I don't remember the dialogue. Please say something <laughs> okay. like that. Okay. okay. And then Batman goes, No, to defeat you. Okay. That's a dialogue in this movie. Yeah. That's a dialogue What's your problem with it? I do not understand. They meet again. Uh -huh. That's supposed to be like the epic, here we go again, showdown again, which Batman wins by what? Punching him in the face? Something uh, he should have done? No, technically not because he's been back for a few scenes before he meets Bane. I remember this also. Batman comes back. He has the time to make a giant flaming Batman in Gotham. Yeah, he does. How does he climb up? He fixes his back. How does he climb up? Goes and makes a giant flame. Are you asking how Batman does things? 
Because how does he even come back from Rajasthan or wherever the prison's supposed to be? What do you mean? How does his back even get healed? That's the part they show the most extensively. So I can't believe you're asking me that. What question. some like some shaman he finds in like the prison just magically? He's in there for months, man, and he's Batman. So with his mental power and physical strength, he gets back on his feet. He, he mends his broken back. A broken back, Vikram. Yeah. He broke his spine. He broke his back. They don't talk about the spine. Well, in the comics, Bane breaks Batman's spine. I'm so not talking I about the comics. I think it's pretty understood. It's a spine. Okay, spines heal. Batman is. He's other heal is at the end. Again, na point for Batman is. Batman is, boy. Hashtag Batman. I say, so you are discounting Dark Knight. Uh, and uh, Batman begins. You're discounting everything Batman's ever done in the history of Batman. No, let's just talk about this movie. Why have you come back? No, to defeat you. The dialogues in this movie are lame. Lame. Okay. I know you can't, but just give me another example of lame dialogues in this well, movie. I, I didn't watch the movie. Yeah, exactly. Okay, wait. I have to. Get, um, uh, man, there's so much to talk about. I was trying to think of a Catwoman dialogue, and then dude, I Catwoman realized... dialogues are actually legit. Like when she's when when uh, do you remember the scene where Batman finds out where Catwoman lives, lives because of the tracer in the necklace, mm-hmm. and then he follows her to um, her shaggy Miranda. apartment. No, after that to Miranda Tate's fundraiser okay. where they start dancing in the ballroom. Yeah, the scene from the trailer I remember. And then she actually whispers in his ear about something along the lines of how you know you, you can guys... take so much and leave so little. I remember that only with the trailer. But yeah, like... those are such good dialogues. Like they set the tone in terms of where everyone is coming from, what the what the climate is in that particular time in Gotham, a city like Gotham, and why Bane does what he does and how that impacts the people of Gotham, how they descend into anarchy. You know what? This is a very important point for me to ask. Why does Bane do what he does? Because of Miranda Tate. And what is their collective plan? Actually, I want to change my answer. Bane does what he does because he is the League of Shadows. Does that answer it? Because he was born in the darkness, not just trained in it. Oh my god, dude, the dialogue is so effing <laughs> <is so> <laughs> good. What are you saying? You think darkness is your ally? God, dude, this movie is so good. So good. Come on, man. I, the dialogues especially. I can't believe you're hating on the dialogues. Minus Alfred and uh, Bruce Wayne. Alfred and Bruce Wayne. Minus No to Defeat You or whatever that dialogue was. What Chor is they are. Chor those dialogue. I, oh, can't, yeah. I can't get over it. I can't get over get the over movie it. experience. We need to progress with this feud. Bro, just the experience of watching the movie after, what was it? Three years of waiting or at least two post Dark Knight. Right. No, it was more than that. It was four years of waiting. Okay. And then... You go, and then Batman gets hurt, and he's coming back, and it's like the third act come back, and Batman comes, and you know the scene, right? It's like they're fighting on, by the way, that building is a Kani Mel building where I went to school, and all these cops come in front, and then Batman and Bane face off, and he goes, no, to fight you, or, no, to defeat you, whatever he says. Oh, that's the one when they're mid-fight, actually. Yeah. That's oh. before the most awesome plot twist. Which is Miranda Tate. Is the League of Shadows leader now. She's Ra's al Ghul's daughter. I did not suspect that at any point in the movie. This brings me to Talia Al Ghul. How bad was her death scene? Tell me you remember it. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't spectacular. It wasn't cinematic. It was actually very normal. So I kind of like no, that no, aspect no, no, of it. No, no, wait a second. I don't think you remember what I'm talking about. I do actually. Her acting when she dies. Yeah. Do you? Yeah, when she's spitting out her last dialogue. It's legendary bad. Legendary she bad. She literally, you know what? This is audio, but still, I think our listeners will be able to imagine this. She literally does the cartoon thing where she's like. Eh. Where her tongue just goes to the side and then she just drops her head. That's the worst death in cinema. If you Google worst death in cinema, mm-hmm. I'm guaranteeing you. My hands are going to my computer right now. Talia Al Ghul will come up. I don't have the time to do this bullshit. What's, I her, wanna... name? What's her Nolan favorite name? What's her name? I'm forgetting. Marion Cotillard. Marion Cotillard. Koti- I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But right. isn't that plot twist? Isn't that plot twist amazing? Because up until that point, you're pretty sure that Bane is the League of Shadows. But it didn't make any difference. It's just a way to connect. You know what that plot twist reminded me of? It's like uh, Spectre, that shit Bond movie, where it turns out that Christoph Waltz, who's the head of Spectre, the super secret organization, is Bond's brother. Or it turns out that Spectre, the... Is he Bond's Bond, brother in the movie? Uh, How yeah, do you remember it? Stepbrother. Oh, yeah. yeah? And then also, it turns out that all the villains that had come before in previous Bond movies were like his machinations. Yeah, who cares? That's like forced Easter egging. So here's where your lack of watching this movie before this feud is clearly showing... That plot twist had such a huge implication because everything regarding the prison is dependent on that plot twist, right? Up until that point, it was thought that Bane was the child that had escaped and Batman was 
sort of uh, planning his escape around what the child did. But it turns out that Bane was still in the prison and the child was Tali Al Ghul. Okay, so? So isn't that huge? Because it just changes whatever the movie has set up until that point. It completely just switches that 180 degrees and then you're like, oh my God, that... It oh, doesn't change Batman's mission. It doesn't change Bane's Batman's like, mission. Batman's mission is specific to Gotham. So obviously it's not going to change. It's specific to Gotham and the League of Shadows. So Why that's not changing. Why does the League of Shadows love Gotham so much anyway? Or hate? What do they have against so, it? So they're propping Gotham up to be like a New York City equivalent, right? Like in today's day and age where like the financial capital of the world and stuff like that. But they also mention like Ra's al Ghul mentions in Batman Begins as well that they've done this to Rome and... Venice and all of the major cities that reached a point where the civilization is corrupt and it's actually holding humanity back, it needs to restart. And they destroy those civilizations by means of warfare, economic warfare or actual warfare. So Gotham City is in line next. You know what this makes me think about? And something that I can't believe I haven't brought up yet? Watchmen did it better. Watchmen did what better? This whole like, oh, bringing people together or trying to like destroy... A civilization to you know to actually cleanse it it's minorly overlapping but it, it has nothing to do like these two movies are they're different movies they were different plot lines and different agendas watchman did it better doesn't mean anything watchman did it better bro watchman did what better please like please highlight yeah. that give me no no you give me that's the whole point you said it's, it's doing it better so you tell me what do you think it's doing better Story, <laughs> cinematography. Right, right. The action in this movie? Uh -huh. What is the action in this movie? It's typical Batman action. It's the same action that was there in The Dark Knight. Except with planes. It's the same action that was there in Dark Knight. No, how dare you? The action in The Dark Knight was epic because it was so Joker driven. It was so like chaotic and crazy, right? Like the Joker could do anything at any point and the truck scene, the legendary truck scene with the, the first time the, the bat bike comes out, that's the action. I mean, there is not much action, but yeah, that, that was the, the crazy part. You know, it's, it's like Dishum Dishum action, bro. That's pretty much what it is. Dishum Dishum action. It's Dishum Dishum. 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 Yeah, pretty much. Jeez, whatever, dude. Like, there, there are so many things in this movie that just stand alone or stand out rather as just like, just scenes in terms of visual effects or action. Like that football stadium scene, man. That football stadium blowing up. Who can do a scene like that? I without... remember that from the trailer. And it's too CGI, is it, is it not? I don't think so. It actually looks so authentic. Like that guy, by the way, is a... Uh, uh... Super famous uh, running back for the Steelers. Because Gotham is like very uh, overlapping with Pittsburgh in the movie. Right. So the Gotham, whatever their team is, and actually the Steelers. So that was a big thing for us when it happened when I was in Pittsburgh. But yeah, that's why I remember it very vividly from the trailers. But it looks CGI. I mean, whatever. I think it, I think they did a really good job with that scene. Any I scene... mean, Nolan's big thing is the non-CGI stuff, right? So the opening plane scene, which, I mean, doesn't oh. make... How can I forget about that scene? Because it doesn't make much sense of the plan. Maybe that's why. But the scene. But you can see it. Like, what does that mean? What is their plan? That, that's how that's how Bane escapes. Because they grab one plane with another plane. And then they leave someone in the plane to die with it. Yeah, oversimplifying it like to the point that it doesn't make sense. Yes, but like that's By how Bane way, escapes. Even I remember this much. That's not how Bane escapes. I mean, maybe. But that's more to get that physicist, right? It's it's both. It's more to get the physicist. Fake the physicist's death so that it, uh, the world thinks that he's dead. Uh, and then they can use his knowledge of the technology to make that bomb. And obviously, he's to make Bane and his henchmen escape. And they leave one body behind to to make it look like everyone crashed. Which gets me back to Bane's plan. What is he, what's the plan with the bomb again? What is he trying to prove? He's trying to prove that people are corrupt inherently. And people are selfish inherently. That's what he's trying to prove. But his actual agenda is the bomb's going to blow up regardless. So he wants to do two things. He wants to show Gotham its true self. Yet he wants to blow the shit out of it. And the second one weighs higher than the other. But the first one is like Joker light, is it not? Yeah. It is. Yeah. And the second one is I like... mean that's how that's how crazy people are, man. So <laughs> you're talking like <laughs> you've known Bane for like ten years. I, I feel I feel it I feel a deep connection to Bane, man. Tom Hardy just I could not he surpassed my expectations. I obviously saw the trailer. I don't usually do that with movies. I saw the trailer. I saw what he looked like. I heard what he looked like. But he killed it, man. And that's very rare for me. I'll give him credit for bulking up. And then his usual performing behind a mask is, you know, now his specialty. <laughs> but Nolan's specialty, to be precise. I guess it's a Nolan specialty. Yeah. Dunkirk is Nolan, Nolan said that that guy can do more with his eyes than actors can do with their entire body. And that was after Dunkirk, obviously. But then he'd already done the same thing with Bane. Nolan said, well, shadi kar le. Bane's plan is what you said with the bomb and his execution is dishum dishum. That's how he goes about it. 
what no what do you what are you saying <laughs> dude he just punches batman until batman loses cuz he's that... he's way superior as compared to a 8 year old rusty batman in one on one combat fighting he's trained in everything batman's been trained in but firstly because they're both league of shadows right yeah but batman's rich but batman hasn't done shit for 8 years he walks around with a crane for f f he should just shoot bane batman doesn't kill what's but wrong with you batman maims He tried to maim Bane. Clearly, do it with with like. Also, that 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 fighting scene in the in the dungeon of the sewers between Bane and Batman is, I think, the best one on one hand to hand combat fighting scene I've seen in a movie. What? Yes. The, the, What did you just say? The way it's re- the the way it's shot, man. There's no background music. You hear those punches. You hear those kicks. They're talking in the middle. I think that that scene that scene just hooked me, man. You completely. just insulted every martial arts movie ever, and I'll name. Three scenes that are better than that. One, did you watch? Did you watch Atomic Blonde? I didn't actually. Charlie's Theron kicked more ass. Oh yeah. Than that scene. Okay. Again, okay. Yeah. No sound effect. Okay. You haven't seen it. Any like Daredevil hallway scene? You remember those? Uh yeah. See, that's you taking it to a different tangent. I'm talking about we know Batman as a character which is established, right? And then we see Bane as a new character which is established in that movie. That scene comes in pretty late into the movie, so we know what Bane's capable of. And then the fight that ensues between them could not have been better is my point, essentially. It's okay. I think the real heaviness of that fight for me came from because I'm a very light comic book reader. So I'd read comics where, you know, legendarily Bane breaks Batman's back. That's actually what he was most famous for. So Yeah, I mean I kind of knew what was coming. Just cuz you know we were still in the era where people would name these movies or base these movies off existing comic book arcs which Marvel movies still do. So when I saw Dark Knight Rises I thought it had something to do with Dark Knight Returns which is one of the greatest graphic novels of all time. I agree. I love that too. Yeah, obviously it has Superman so I knew that wouldn't be the case but you know Batman was coming out of retirement I was like okay this is great it's going to be to that level. <sighs> what a disappointment man. Plus Catwoman Can we talk about Catwoman? Take Catwoman out of the movie. Do we lose anything? Be honest. Um I'm not a fan of Anne Hathaway in general, so I'm trying to be unbiased here completely and yes, we do lose something. We lose what? The hot factor? No, not just the hot factor. Catwoman is forget that she's Catwoman, right? Selina Kyle, where she is in society, where she's reached, what she's become. She's she's personifying Gotham to an extent. so her character actually allows us uh, or gives us a window into gotham and its citizens to an extent so if you completely take that away then there's there will be no personalization with gotham citizens at all you just add a citizen oh my god i just remembered thinking of adding citizens dude robin is in this movie robin is in this movie i totally forgot how lame is he joseph gordon levitt and by the way he is the best citizen i guess he's the pro Batman citizen and Selina Kyle is like the Also other. he's 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 law enforcement as well right so so his 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 mindset and his motives are completely different This movie is too many characters I don't think Gordons so. in this movie Obviously he'll be in this movie where will he go New Robins in this movie New Robin What's I think What's his name even in the movie man Robins the play right Oh I don't know Robins is middle name It's yeah it's Clearly. his middle name Blake Officer Blake Blake yes you right What's his first name Yeah so Officer Blake the role is totally useless Or if you wanted that citizen POV, then how is it mind. useless? I feel like you're using the term useless very unhandily. Well, like, what do you mean this useless? Movie's useless. They should have just ended in the Dark Knight, man. It would have been so good, so good. How does that make sense? It would have been so good, and Heath Ledger shouldn't have died. That would have been so good. Okay, never mind. I feel like this is this is just gone off rails. Like, what are you talking about? Is it useless? Officer Blake, why shoehorn the Robin thing? That ending with the Batcave. Yeah, I thought that was perfect. Firstly, Those are the things that make it such a good ending to a trilogy. So this guy just figures it out because he was an orphan that Batman is Bruce Wayne. No, because he saw Bruce Wayne and because of what he went through personally and what Bruce Wayne went through personally, he connected a lot of dots to come to that conclusion. And nobody else has done this. No. Because no one else has been in Blake's position or Bruce Wayne's position. And Batman has disappeared for 7 years and Bruce Wayne has been hiding yeah in his mansion for 7 years. Yeah. And nobody connects this either. Yeah, this is supposed to be a realistic movie. It is a realistic. It's as realistic as a comic book can get. Don't you think so? No. I what's think... What's the most realistic comic book movie you've seen? The Avengers: Infinity War. <laughs> uh, v for Vendetta. V for ah, Vendetta is realistic. It's not. How is it realistic? It's. It is. 
a dude with a mask and a cape is flying through London, slashing people up, Creates talking only in V's, and and that's realistic to you. The talking in V's is realistic because he talked in V's in the movie. And that's kick ass. Is realistic except for everything in the movie. No, except for him getting the hot girl. Everything else is realistic. Right. Also, Nicholas Cage so realistic. Kick ass did it better. Hit girl, <laughs> greater than dude. Catwoman. So desperate, man. Come on. I mean, come on. <laughs> I know. We, I know we're winging it partially, but like, come okay. On. So you Add think this movie is realistic? As realistic as a comic book movie can get. Yes. The flying, the, most. the flying bat plane. What does he call it? The bat plane. No, the bat. Oh, the bat. Yeah. He takes the bat into the ocean. Then he doesn't die. Then he magically appears in a cafe in Paris. Connects back with Michael Caine. The subversion to that, dude. The scene. The foreshadowing to that scene, dude. Like, them actually showing the cafe, Michael Caine going to that specific cafe. And then, yeah, Bruce Wayne's there with Catwoman. That's basic screenwriting. By little, the way, little tear came to my Little eye. tear. Little. I was like, Tika, bad man. So I was like, yeah, Jeet Gaya. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we've talked about this before, but one good way to fix that ending, and I do say fix because I think it's broken, is to actually pull in Nolan, which is to say pull an Inception top spinning moment. And leave it open ended. And leave it open ended. Yeah, it should just be uh, Alfred looking in the direction where he ends up looking. And instead of cutting to Batman and Catwoman smiling happily, where did those guys get together, by the way? Because like, you Miranda, felt it, yeah. Because Miranda Tate died. No, you felt it throughout. Ah, man, this is Bruce Wayne, dude. What a slag. Player, bro. Oh, what a, what a, a player. Man slut. Also, to your point about open ended, I feel like it's weak to leave. Uh, a multi-movie sort of trilogy or or uh, series open-ended. That doesn't make sense. That actually doesn't do justice to the efforts that have been put in by the filmmakers. Open-ended works for standalone movies really well, but a trilogy ending in an open-ended way just means that, oh, there's going to be part four, part five. Yeah, what is this logic? Why not? Keep him wanting more. Because in today's day and age, that means that there's going to be part four, part five. That's not Nolan's way. Nolan's like, bro, ho gaya. I'm moving on. I'm going to make a new Nolan's way is to leave it open-ended. Standalone movies, yeah. But like Dunkirk wasn't open-ended. It it depends on the movie. It would be better, though. It's it better than, is an open-ended. It's better than this like, neat, bored, tired present to a movie ending. No, I don't think so. Where man. Batman survived. It, it, Interstellar works well with a, with, with a clear, defined ending. Dunkirk obviously works well. It depends on the movie. Inception is the perfect movie to have to leave it open ended just because there's so many confusing plots and subplots happening that to leave it open ended actually leads the user or the okay, okay, listener. Okay. Forget the fact that open ended would have been better. We can disagree there. But the ending itself is not that good. Alfred magically seeing Bruce and Selena, that's so weak. Why? Because he just, he just, he just uh, held back uh, Bruce Wayne's funeral. So he thinks he's dead. And he just has that because they also foreshadow that by Alfred saying that, you know, I wish that you'd never come back. And uh, I I go to this cafe every year and then, you know, I look up and then sometimes I hope that I see you there just to know that you're all right. And that's what happens. Dude, come on. How can you not be moved by that? Oh, my God. Little tear because I'd been sitting in this movie for two and a half hours and that's how it ended. I still remember my little tear. Oh, my God, dude. I know secretly your little tear was because you saw Batman then and like Batman I'm like, and now you're just like, oh, for the purpose of this feud, you like I teared up because the movie was sad. If anything, it was because I was missing Heath Ledger. A much better villain, actor. Dude, so, you know, that was I was worried about this before going into this movie because after watching The Dark Knight, my brain literally melted, okay? It took me two days to comprehend how good that movie was because I watched it completely underhyped, completely, like, I wasn't a big fan of Nolan when it came out. Like, i seen some of his movies and I was like, they're great, whatever, he's another good director. What a spot, man. I wish I could be you in that movie. Dude, I saw, the only spoiler I got was because it released in the States a week before, a friend of mine was in the States and he's like, you have to go watch this movie, you will shit your pants. That was literally all he said. And he's like, I don't want to say more. I was like, okay, don't say more. And I went and watched the movie. I didn't take too much heat to that. And my mind melted, literally. And a lot of that had to do with Heath Ledger's performance of the Joker. So what I was really worried about with this movie was how Bane would turn out and how he would match. And I think he did a tremendous job, yeah. He, 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 there couldn't have been a better villain to follow up Heath Ledger's Joker. Of course there could have been. There could have been Penguin. Ugh. I, I never liked Penguin. Danny DeVito as Penguin? Oh, dude. Oh my god, which reminds me. How do we not talk about this? Batman did it better. 
Batman Forever did it really? better. Really? No, Forever. That's aggressive. Batman Returns. If you say Batman and Robin, I'm gonna shove that Batman up your ass. Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin. You have to rewatch Batman and Robin. It is one of the most entertaining movies you will ever watch. Slapstick and stupid entertaining. Yeah, I agree. Dude, you know what? So bad it's good. It's still good, right? So Batman and Robin definitely did it better. You did. The only movie. You're a dead man. Only Batman Forever didn't do it better. The guys, Vidor's dying tonight. <laughs> and uh, say your goodbyes. Um, uh, I'm sorry, goodbye, young Alfred. I'm and, sorry, Auntie. I love you, but he has to die. And uh, Batman from Batman vs Superman did it better. Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck is the second best Batman. Ben Affleck. Yeah, Ben Affleck is the second best Batman after Christian Bale in The Dark Knight. Argo fuck yourself did it better. <laughs> is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know the purpose is to feud the movie, not piss off your opponent to the point where he's feeling <laughs> I think murderous. It's one of the same, yeah. No, man. Like you you need to keep your life and and your existence. Oh, Adam uh, West did it better? Kapow, Batman did it better. Kapow, boom, mm-hmm. bam. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. At least he had a cool utility belt that did stuff. Right. Batman just has like a the bat. Oh, and you remember that one scene? At least Adam West was fun and exuberant and <laughs> colorful you know this Batman's so lame and gray and just always sad gloomy yeah so this, this movie is joyless it's joyless not, it's joyless it's not supposed to be joyful is the point well that sucks an- a city it? is descending into anarchy it's cordoned off it's about to blow the fuck up there aren't going to be like little red riding who's just hopping along the streets you know distributing candy or whatever I actually do remember one gag from this movie by the way do you remember one gag from this movie there's a joke. There's a there's a joke button in this movie. Okay. Do you remember it? No, shoot. It's when Catwoman disappears on him, the way he does, usually on people. And then he just says, so that's what that feels like. Do you oh, remember? yeah. Yeah, I do. Why does he talk like that to himself, Vikram? I mean, that's how he talks. No, he doesn't. Yeah. I mean, why doesn't he talk like himself? To, wh- firstly, why would he say that to himself? That's a very non-Nolan, non-Dark Knight trilogy. Thing I think I think that's a great joke. To your question about why does he talk like that, you've forgotten Batman Begins and Dark Knight. Also, <laughs> it's because he has that in his thing. No, he doesn't. Oh, that's Ben Affleck. I think that's a great joke, man. And I mean, he's Batman, dude. Let him talk like Batman usually supposed to talk. It's his Batman Begins on the rooftop screaming, Alfred, Alfred, Alfred. It's the same moment. Alfred. So that's how that feels like. And then um, you know, you, I'm alone, but I still talk like this. <laughs> you know, another joke uh, from the movie is uh, when Catwoman uh, just takes his Lambo away and he has to call Alfred for the lift. And Alfred's just like, oh, you've been out of the game for a while. It's going to take a little while to get in the swing of things. Yeah. Do you remember that? That was no. a good joke. I, I, I mean, nothing was funny about what you just said. Clearly. because so either it hands. wasn't a bad joke or it was your delivery. It was my delivery, obviously. Cause wow. I, taking the hit for Nolan. <laughs> huh? yeah, of course, man. All day. All day. Any any Nolan fallacies can come out are my fault. In fact, you reminding me of that moment reminds me of a way better joke in Batman Begins when Alfred comes to pick Bruce Wayne up in a private jet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, after Bruce Wayne returns for the first time. And then and then he says it's good that I took major control of the company. So I think he says that something along the lines of you can use the roles whenever you want, but just fill it up when you're done with it. Aha, uh-huh, see, even with your delivery, that's fine. Absolutely the same delivery. <laughs> Absolute, nothing changed. Exactly. They were, they were both Michael exactly. Caine. Nothing changed in my delivery. Yeah, but the joke was funnier. Okay, it was funnier. So what? Nolan was just tired. The great Nolan had had enough. I he was I, no longer Nolan. I've, Nolan, Nolan. I've had enough, man. <laughs> I don't know what the f*** you're talking about. Nolan was tired. Nolan was tired. He's like, I'm so tired right now. Let me just make a he, shit movie. He wanted to go make Interstellar, man. He's like, man, I have to make another one of these. Come on, dude. I'm done. I'm an artist. I'm an auteur. Uh-huh. Stop making me make more of these movies. Nolan had a big part in figuring out whether this should be a three movie or a two movie or a single movie. Oh, people make mistakes. Okay, so Nolan now was tired. Say it's become Nolan made a mistake. He was a tired, mistaken man. <laughs> okay, okay. While making this movie. Dude, I don't think anyone can combine anarchy and this whole death and doom vibe with literally a building sized bat ship in the same movie as convincingly as Nolan did. So I don't know what you're harping on about. You know, I gotta be honest, I'm getting a little tired too, but I think it's the Red Bull crash. Oh, it's happening? I think so. I need to bust my camera out. <laughs> my wings are slowly fading away. Much like Batman's did. Did they? Didn't work. <laughs> you know, I do have something we can end the feud with. Which is? Uh, it's a joke. It's a street joke. A street joke? It's a chutkula. Okay. What happens when Batman sees Catwoman? What happens with her? The Dark Knight Rises. Oh, Jesus. 
And that wraps up this special episode of Film Feud where we didn't watch the movie. AKA, we winged it. I'm about to fall asleep because the crash is coming on pretty strong now. Thank you for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed the feud. And now, we feuded and you, the listeners, get to decide who you think won. You can vote on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Film Feud Pod, and let us know who you think won. Let us know what arguments you might have made. Let us know what movie you'd like us to feud next. For more information, you can also go on our website, manchamira.com. And don't forget to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, CastBox, wherever you guys get your podcasts. Until next week, bye-bye. See ya. See ya.